Hi, this is Christine Clapp from Spoken with Authority, and I'm joined with some of my amazing presentation skills experts who are colleagues who do coaching and workshop facilitation for us. And today we're talking about one of the important elements of presentation skills that will become more and more relevant as people get vaccinated and we make our way back to in-person work, in-person teaching, and in-person conferences and events. And that is speaking with a mask on. And today we're gonna to talk about how you can become better at communicating effectively with a mask on, whether you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, if you're in a meeting, or if you have an opportunity to give a more formal speech. To kick us off, let's hear from Bjorn, who I know has been teaching for a while in person wearing a mask. Tell us about your experiences and what advice you have. The University of Georgia has been face to face with classes uh, fall of 2020 and spring of 2021 with some, some folks not being face to face, but they really push for more face to face classes in the spring. I'm teaching a face to face class. And uh, normally when I go back to school in the fall, I, there's what I call like, you gotta get your lecture voice back. And that is just the, you have to be used to speaking for a longer period of time and projecting more than just a conversational level, a conversational volume. And so one of the tips that I would have is that you really do need to take very, very seriously the vocal warm up. Uh, some people might think that that's a funny thing. It's a hokey thing. Uh, so those tongue twisters in, in the books that Christine and I have worked on, we've got tongue twisters in there. I would do those or just if you're driving somewhere or at your house or just have your, your earbuds in uh, listening to music, sing along. It might seem funny, but you've got, you really have to get warmed up because as I know some of my colleagues are going to talk about just the, the state of play is different when you've got that mask on. And so the vocal warm up is incredibly important for not just the muscles, but for the projection, because you might be doing a little bit more of that. Thanks Bjorn. And Jean, I know that you had some tips about the mechanics and how you actually project, what are your recommendations for speakers who are wearing masks? Yes, I did a little bit of in-person teaching in the fall when the numbers were lower. And I found myself as I was speaking that the volume was important. I had to project more loudly than I normally did, but also taking care with articulation the mask can give a little bit of a garbled, muffled sound as well. So as you're increasing the volume, you have to be careful to over articulate a little bit. And what I found, this goes to the preparation, Bjorn was talking about the warmups. And I think you, you get a sort of dryness in your mouth. I would find sometimes that as I was speaking, I would get caught in my throat and hydration is really important to be prepared for speaking for longer periods of times with the mask on. Excellent. And a good reminder that you can't hydrate during a presentation or speaking situation. It's got to happen before. So the day before and the morning of and the day of just to always have that water bottle with you. So it does. Although I think we, we also have to allow people to go and take a sip now and then, you know, you, you do have to do that. And, and the other thing is to think about uh, if you are in a, in a larger setting or maybe doing a hybrid event where microphones are involved to take some extra care with testing that out so that no necklaces are bumping against it or you know how is the mask affecting the pickup of the microphone so having some tech people who can assist with that would be important absolutely and for some events for example meetings that are hybrid i could definitely see a situation where we're sitting at a conference room wearing masks and we have our colleagues who are on the screen and that is going to be a really hard one for IT just in terms of how do you pick up each person but not get that reverberation sound from the other people sitting near us. So as we move into that hybrid environment wearing masks, I think the IT part and doing getting there early, doing triple checks to make sure that it works and is going to be even more important. David, I know that you had some advice on the etiquette of wearing masks among others. Do you want to talk Absolutely. a little bit about your experience? You'll never guess what I'm going to talk about with regard to mask wearing. Smiling would never come to mind for me when I'm communicating, I know. 
But I never realized how much I smile when I'm talking to people until I started having to wear the mask. And then you realize that sometimes people are responding to you differently. And so for me, what I found is I have to acknowledge that. And it may seem like a really simple thing, but we fail to do this all the time when we're communicating. Something is awkward and we don't simply say, hey, this is awkward and this is what I'm trying to do about it. But for me, when I'm talking to people, especially the smaller the audience size, the more it helps to just acknowledge that I can't smile as much as I typically would with the mask. I've also noticed on the line of awkwardness, weird things happen the longer you speak with the mask on. And you don't know this unless you've actually practiced speaking with the mask on. We're all wearing our masks all the time, but we're not speaking all the time with the mask on. So for some of us, when you start speaking and you're doing all the things you're supposed to do, like raising your voice and projecting, this is gross, but you build up a lot of moisture inside of the mask and it starts to feel weird. And then you start to wonder if you look weird because maybe your mask looks wet, then you do the one thing that nobody's ever supposed to do. You start playing with your mask and moving your mask around. So I would encourage anyone who has to do a presentation wearing the mask to practice wearing the mask and speaking for a period of time. And then if you have these problems, like what I'm suggesting, you might wanna have a solution like wearing the protective surgical style mask then finding a cloth mask that you like and putting that over the mask. The CDC is recommending that as I understand it now anyway, but it can also make your presentation look cleaner and neater. And this awkward process of wearing the mask will be a little less distracting for you. Absolutely, a really great reminder about not fiddling with the mask, not taking the mask down so people can hear you. <laughs> leaving it on, trying not to touch it and having an extra one with you. And I think that's important, especially when you're going out in, in the world and going to events that are longer, because we should be changing them regularly and, you know, washing our hands as we're doing that, uh, as you speak in them for a while, or if you sneeze, right, you need to excuse yourself and change that out. So it's a good reminder. Periodically, they just break on you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I know the CDC has some new guidance on how to wear the surgical mask. They talk about tying by little knots and then folding in the mask, the paper mask. So I'll put that in the, a link to that, how you do that, how you tie it and how you fold it in to help get a better seal in the notes of this show. So this interview panel discussion. Michelle, I know that you have training as a speech language pathologist, so it must be really, really hard to do your work when people are wearing masks and when you're trying to demonstrate things wearing a mask. You're absolutely right. There are a couple barriers. So we talked about sound. I'm gonna build on a couple of points that my colleagues have already made. Uh, the American Speech Language Hearing Association tells us there's about a three to 12 decibel loss uh, when we're wearing masks. So in addition to loss of volume, there's also some sound distortion as well. I would suggest trying some of the clear masks because it gives your audience some of the visuals back because we do lip read a little bit to kind of help us um, kind of stay in tune with the message when we're, we're looking at people speak. And the other thing that has come to mind is when you're establishing your norms, also tell folks it's okay to take a breather break I've done one-on-one -on -one interactions where after about 30 minutes or so, uh, I've stepped outside of the room or the person I was working with stepped outside of the room so we can both take a breather break. So just to let people know it's okay to do that. As David has said, when it gets a little uncomfortable, we know it's gonna distract from our thoughts and then we're no longer concentrated on the content. In terms of delivering to a large group of people, a strategy that I'm considering is having a little bit of me pre-recorded. So some of what I may have delivered live pre-COVID would be embedded in my presentation and I would save the live talking for Q&A or directing workshop activities. I love that idea, Michelle, it, because people seeing your mouth either with that pre-recorded video or with the clear mask. So there are some masks that have a little clear box over your mouth is really important for inclusion. So people who are lip reading and I know Michelle works with people who are working on uh, articulation and 
doing speech language uh, pathology therapy and being able to see those things, the placement of the tongue and the movement of the mouth and the movement of the face is really important. So those masks with a clear view can be really helpful for a lot of reasons in terms of inclusion. The other things that I would add are one, we've talked about practicing about how the mask gets wet and how you want to practice so that doesn't throw you off. Uh, you want to practice so that you can speak loudly. You want to practice so that you can work with the microphone and get everything right. The other piece of practice is that if you are giving a presentation and you're used to reading your notes, glancing at your notes without a mask, it can look and feel very different when you have something bulky on your face to glance down. So the way that you are manipulating the PowerPoint or the visuals how you walk on stage, how you look at your notes. Again, you want to practice that with a mask on so you don't feel like a fish out of water when you give your actual presentation. So practice the way that you will present. And if you are presenting with a mask, you have to do those rehearsals wearing a mask. And I would recommend the earlier you start, we always recommend six for success or six sticks, six rehearsals at least. Start as early as you can in those six rehearsals to start working with a mask so you get into the habit of using the mask. And then the other recommendations I have are for people who wear glasses. My contacts have been bothering me lately, so I've been wearing glasses more and more. And the fogging up of glasses is a real problem. And it's something that makes it very, very difficult to communicate in one-on-one -on -one small group or one-to-many situations. And the name of the game is to work on getting rid of that gap between your mask and your glasses so that that fogging doesn't happen because the fogging is a sign that there's not a tight fit. So a couple suggestions for you is one, consider getting a mask that has a tighter fit. So some of the masks, I know that there is controversy over whether everyone should have an N95 mask because we need them for healthcare workers, but however you can get the best fitting mask and even one with just a nose piece that's metal that can conform to your nose will help. And another way, if you don't have one with that nose piece, or even if you do, you can use some uh, tape that's for, you know, putting on wounds or bandages and just do a little piece of tape on the bridge of your nose to help keep that seal really tight and will help your glasses from fogging up. You also can wash your glasses with soap and water and let them air dry and it will leave a, a little bit of a film on them that will help reduce the fogging or they are anti-fogging solutions that you can get that divers, for example, use to help keep their mask, their uh, goggles cleared. And that can be something that is helpful as well. But if you are going back and you're a glasses wear, you definitely want to think about ways that you can mitigate the fogging up of your glasses so that it's easier for you to see other people and your notes and what's going on around you while you're communicating. Did anyone else, else have any final thoughts on wearing a mask when you are communicating? I think the only tip that I would add is the use of a decibel meter. When you talk about practicing and trying to compensate for that decibel loss of three to 12 decibels, you can search for free apps online, DB meter, and you'll be able to practice and make sure that your loudness stays within that probably 70 to 75 ish range. Yeah. And it just is on your phone and you can measure it as you're practicing. And again, it's higher than you think it would be. So when you practice initially, you might be in the forties or fifties or sixties, like very soft and you do need to get it much louder than you think. It's a really great tool to get some external feedback, if you will, on how loud you are, because sometimes we feel like we're really loud. And in fact, we're not And the mask just compounds that it, it muffles us a lot. Well, I want to thank my colleagues, Bjorn and Jean and David and Michelle for spending some time today talking about how we can do a better job giving presentations and communicating while we are wearing a mask. Certainly something that will be more and more part of our lives as uh, we go on in 2021 and beyond.